So as soon as you can. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever, depending on where you are calling from. I just want to say you are welcome again to this show. This is what we call update. And when we, whenever we talk about update is a place whereby we rediscover ourselves, we, which, you know, we, we get improved on what we used to do before, or we get more ideas on things that need to be done. Whenever you find updates, either on your device or on your computer, you know, it, it, it tells you you need to update. Probably you need to update the software or you need to update uh, certain things, application that you are using on your computer or your computer actually needs to update itself. But something needs to change in that computer and or in that software that you are using. The moment you allow this update to take place, you see the computer or the device running faster, proficiency in, in application, and everything begins to run good. You yourself, you will enjoy it. Likewise, we are talking about update in our system, in our, in our daily, daily life. What we are doing right now, what we are facing right now around the world, is just for us to update ourselves. And I'm glad to invite you to this channel at this moment. As you gain ideas on what you should do or what you have left undone or what you have abandoned for a while. And maybe what you are, what you are doing and you are not doing it rightly and you want to do it better in a better way because you can use old system to run new application. You need to, you will have to update it first before it can run. And I'm glad to introduce to you this afternoon, a pastor, he is also an uh, ag agriculturist who will also be talking to you what you can do around the world, wherever you find yourself, how to live an independent life. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you into the studio today, Pastor Abraham Olanri Waju. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much. I want to sincerely appreciate you, sir, for the honor of bringing me to this platform. I, I see it as a great honor. I, I, I cannot take it for granted. Uh, I've known you very while, uh, and I believe in what you are doing here. And thank you for the honor you are doing me today. Thank you so much. You are welcome, sir, Pastor Larry Waju. And I just thank God for what God, has, what God is using you for, or even around the world as well. And I've heard much about you, and uh, so much, uh, Gustav. And I know uh, you have uh, so much to give to the world, to us as well. Uh, so, without wasting time, who is Olan Rewaju Ibrahim? Well, Olan Rewaju Ibrahim is a pastor. Uh, I am born in Lagos State to the family of Mr. and Mrs. Ajao, and uh, I'm a native of Idofia. That is a town in Kwara State. And uh, by the grace of God, I'm a pastor and also into agriculture. So that is all about uh, Olan Rewaju for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I, you, you know, 
you're 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 growing up you're growing up how does it look like you know um you know from Quara State to now that's to, right how does well, it look like? because yes thank you so much <laughs> thank you thank you so much <laughs> well um thank you for that question like i told you i'm born into a family of um Mr. and Mrs. Rahman Ajao. And uh, you, I think the question is, uh, my name is Abraham Olani Waju. How come I didn't say Abraham Ajao? Well, I, I grew up uh, with my grandmother. And, uh, uh, my grandfather happened to be a, a farmer, a full-time farmer. That is where I picked uh, the interest in farming. And uh, not just interest in farming, now that, that was where I picked because the rudimentary tools that we were using in those days, like cut uh, the hole and cutlass and all the rest, the, they are not something that's uh, that are easy at all. It can be very frustrating. So that was what led me to uh, how do I have a very big farm and I will, I, will, I will not need hole, I will not need cutlass. So that was what led me to begin to imagine. I think there is need for some machines on the field. And I grew up to begin to imagine, and when I begin to see tractors on farm, then I, I begin to have interest. So uh, as regards to what I said earlier, born, with, born by a Muslim father, and uh, the time came that uh, uh, so friends will ask me, what is the meaning of Ajayao? And uh, we try and explain and explain and explain. They wouldn't get me. So I, just, I told my dad one day, I said, Dad, what is the meaning of this name, Ajao? Then he was able to give me some explanation that was not uh, sufficient, connected to one deity or the other. And, uh, and I asked him, would you, would you like me to change this name? He said, why not? Uh, that, the name was given to, to him by his parents when he was yet to have a counter with Christ himself then. So but now, that's if, if, if you're led. So that was how. I have to pray to God, and God gave me the name Abraham. And to the glory of God, the name has been speaking because, uh, uh, like God spoke to Abraham, that uh, he's going to be a father of many nations. Uh, we, we've been privileged to preach in so many uh, nations of the world today, and we have sons and daughters all over the world. To the glory of God. So, uh, growing up, uh, I grew up in farm in the village, and uh, I, I have access to rudimentary tools like coal and cutlasses. And uh, that was not good enough. So that was what uh, brought the quest to commercial farming. And, and, uh, and that is what uh, God Almighty has uh, connected me to it today. And uh, we are doing well. Amen. So, so when we look at that one, I just want to uh, see how God has brought you this far uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, ministry. How? Did you come about ministry? Ah, to God be the glory. Um, by the grace of God, growing up in the village with my grandmother, there was a day that some group of uh, evangelists, some group of missionaries, they came to our village. They brought a film titled Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the slogan that period was, I have found him, new life in Jesus. You can find him too. That was the slogan. Every corner of our village was bombarded. And I watched this film and that was how I had my encounter with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It was a Christmas period, December 24 to be precise. To be precise. And um, uh, from then I started growing up and uh, when the call of God was so much on me when I was in Quara State Polytechnic in Loring, Quara State, I, uh, I decided to take on going to Bible College and then from then, I, I started ministering from my mother's church, the Anglican church, as a choir. From then, to, I became an evangelist in the church. And then uh, I, I was being invited in Methodist church. I also pastors of Methodist churches. And then from then, I heard about Redeemed Church. And uh, I started um, uh, be going to different kind of courses. Now I'm about to finish my Rila uh, Master in Transformation. And I've been moving from nation to nation by the grace of God, uh, just uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, uh, in, in time of um, as a missionary uh, evangelist. Uh, and uh, a lot of signs and wonders abide. We give our glory to God. That is. 
Wow. Wow. It, 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 how God, you know, it's like you, you have a Muslim background, right? Exactly. And uh, God, you know, is, is, it, is it true? Because I, 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 from my, that people went to, when a Muslim give back, give, give his life to Christ, they are, that they are kind of a, uh, let me Christian. just go radical, a radical, <laughs> uh, and uh, they go, they go, they go all the way out for Christ, just like that. Exactly, exactly. One have to be very aggressive, aggressive because uh, it's a kind of uh, a, a encounter that we have. And uh, a Muslim pray five times in a day, the same seal we want to bring into the body of Christ. And there are so many things, you know, when it comes to being aggress aggressive, you, you know what it means. Uh, being violent, you know, but this time now, a positive violence, you know. <laughs> if only the Bible, the Bible says the, the son uh, that is going to be born by the born woman, you remember, uh, yeah. that is going to be wide. So that has to be transferred to the, the positive way now for, for the use of the gospel to project the gospel of Jesus Christ across the globe. So the, the kind of zeal that we have in doing what, if you, I mean, when we are at that particular period, when you talk anything against Islam, you know, we, as, we, as if to say we, we, are, we are defending God, God, we are ready to fight, we are ready to, you know, <laughs> that's the kind of zeal. So, but then when you have Christ now, the seal is now being projected positively, you know, to win souls, to construct life, to build life, to bless life, and uh, that is it. Wow, wow. Yeah, I, and, and I can tell you, I really, I really, you know, because sometimes when I, when I see that, anytime I see a Muslim converted to become a Christian, I see, I see them like Paul, so turning Paul. And that that uh, tenacity, that, that that power, that that you know, you know, they want to do everything, That's everything right. all out, all out for God. And that, right. that, that and and I, and I can see that that's why you know an evangelist like you, you know, can still, you know, be be more anxious to go out there to do uh, uh, more work for God, risking even. To some, some you would take you know, risk their life to go anywhere, any, any do That's anything, right. anything right. to God. And I thank God. I pray that the Lord will continue to uphold you, sir, uh, and and guide you in all your work. So, what is the update that you have experienced so far? You know, with what is going on around the globe. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, like the word updates from a layman's sense, we can say is upgrade. In other words, upgrade yourself. In other words, be more current. In other words, because it's only people that are current usually enjoy currency. And when you stop inspiring <laughs> people, then you are can't be shown expired. You don't say without, without word again. People that are, it's that are- It's only that people that are current that okay. enjoy currency. And when you stop inspiring people, then your account will soon expire. Yeah. Huh? Yes, sir. Um, uh, for instance, in the 1998, we have a privilege to know a company that was called Kodak. Kodak has 170,000 workers. And they alone produce 85% of all the paper for photo in the whole world. Mm -hmm. But three years after, digital photo came to scene and they refused to upgrade themselves. And that was what led to the disappearance of Kodak. So a lot of things is going on now that is challenging us to upgrade ourselves, even to the body of Christ. Like COVID-19, I see it as a call onto the body of Christ to get ourselves upgraded. I saw a comic of a woman, I don't know whether you see it, Pastor Femi, on Facebook, and the woman carried some luggages and he said, he's angry and he's not going to hurt this year to his age because he didn't use it. I don't know whether you see, whether you see that comic. <laughs> he said he didn't use this year, so he won't hurt it to his age. <laughs> so, and I begin to laugh. Why will you not use this year? <laughs> because you are not upgraded. 
You see, when you refuse to update yourself, you will soon become outdated. Mm. And when you become outdated, it means you become useless. You are no more impactful. You are no more relevant. So to remain relevant, to remain socially relevant, to remain impactful in any field of life, you need to keep on updating yourself regularly. This COVID-19 period is a call unto the church to get ourselves updated. We have sat in the analog bench for too long. And the world is going to get an app. Imagine we left our children to be to the internet for 164, I mean 68 hours in a week. And all we have to nourish them is just about 15 hours at most in a week. Maybe five hours Sunday service, and three hours digging deep, two hours in the Thursday, and Saturday, maybe one hour. At most, maybe like 15 hours in a week. We have 168 hours in a week, and the children are online being tutored by some unseen, dangerous unbelievers. And so all that we teach them within in, in, in 15 hours, they, they rubbish everything online. So I see the COVID-19 as a call unto the church for us to come onto social media, take over the social media. I remember some times ago, the church took over the media houses, the TV station, the but we are not doing the same to, 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 to the social media. We saw the devil trying to use the, the social media to destroy our children, yet we are still sitting back. Now we are still sitting in the church. Even the pew of the church is tired of our sitting. The Bible does not say we should sit and preach the gospel. It says we should go into the whole world and preach the gospel. And we just have to use any medium to do this. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Great Commission, is a serious, is a serious matter. And we just have to use any medium to ensure that this is executed. So at least it seems we have been ignorance of the magic of social media in the life of the youth. We have left our future in the hands of strange tutors teaching our children. But this COVID-19 has actually given us a challenge. Now you have to reach your members, and there is no any other option but through the social media. Mm. And the social media is now becoming things to talk about in the church. Very interesting. Very interesting. This is what God actually wants us to achieve at this particular period. Because if we refuse to get ourselves updated, we will just begin to find out that youths are no more coming to church and we don't know. The information is coming to them online. It's time for the church now to go online and meet them online. And I thank God for what God is using you to do right now. That, that I sincerely appreciate God for what God is, is using you to do presently. You see, we are, we are going into the age of technology, the fullness age of technology, and a lot of things is going to be happening. Mm. A lot of things are going to be happening, both in the spiritual world, in this, in the, a lot of things are going to be happening. Like, uh, for instance, like I told you about the Kodak, a lot of industries will suffer the same thing. What's, what's what Kodak suffer at that time? A lot of industries, like agriculture, they will suffer the same thing that Kodak suffer if care is not taken. Why? Because software is going to be taking over any businesses. So many industries, softwares. Like the example I give, the Uber. Uber is just a software, and they are the largest, the largest taxi company in the whole world today. Yes, they don't have taxi. They don't have a car. I have a company, I have uh, this uh, hotel, hotel company too, that is the largest now. They don't have a building. So a time is coming that we'll be having different kind of innovations, technology. And if we don't wake up, wake up, if you don't wake up to catch up with what is, update ourselves, one well, will soon become irrelevant. Mm. For instance, uh, uh, a man called, uh, uh, I, okay, IBM Watson, I think IBM Watson, he was talking about um, uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, that a time is going to come any moment from now that you will not need to consult a barista anymore. All you need to do is just to go online and you will be receiving a cancer, accurate cancer, 90% accurate cancer from a barista online. 
you won't see anybody to just be a kind of robotic thing. I mean, accurate counsel, just with your with, with your just a credit card, you take the right counsel. You don't need to see any any lawyer. You don't need to see any barrister. You don't need to see any Anthony. And oh, I mean, Acqui and then it's, it's developing another another uh, um, software right now also that is going to detect diagnose cancer in the in the in patients uh, if four times better than human nurses. These are some of the things that is going on in the world. What about autonomous um, uh, autonomous uh, cars? Yes. Autonomous cars. You heard about that also? Yes. Well, you all you need is just your phone. You call a car and it will be right there in front of your doorstep, and just speak to the car. You pay with your with, with your with, with your card. Take you to anywhere you want. You don't need any car park. You don't need anything, and then it take you to anywhere you want, and then you come back. So a time is going to come that our children, they will not need to even have driver license because they don't need a car. So the world is going into technology. All this, uh, the insurance company, many of the insurance company we have to, I mean, write off if they don't get themselves updated, think of something else to do because at that particular time when we have autonomous cars, there will be like zero accident. So if you are in the zonary world, in, 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 I mean, insurance world, and you are waiting for uh, accident package or whatever, I mean, you better find something else to do. So a lot of things like that is happening in the field of agriculture. Agriculture has reached the level now that you don't need to wait for rain before you plant crops. We have what is called pyro, that is irrigation equipment, and you can have, you can grow your crop. 20, I mean, around the year. Not just that, the equipment that I recommend that, that you just have to sit in the comfort of your house and then you monitor what is going on in your farm. You can own your pivot, your regulation equipment on your phone, right there in, the city, in your city room. Right there in your city room. I have some company that, that I visited in uh, Nebraska, where, you know, and also uh, I think North Dakota. So, I mean, they are into all this technology now. In the comfort of your room, you see what is going on in your farm. You own your pivot when there is need for, for rain. You, you do the rain in your city room on your phone. And when you need to take it off, you take it off on your phone, right in your sitting room. That is how far technology is going now. And, you know, like the fighting that we are having in Nigeria right now, talking about farmers, uh, uh, what's it called, herdsmen. All this is all these are not necessary. We see the way it's been done here. Ranches. We have ranches all over the places here. You don't need to, I mean, it's not compulsory that you have to be raising cow all over the city when there is no room for it. If you have enough room to do that, no problem. But when there is no enough room to do that, you have a ranch. You grow the crop like other farmers are growing crop, and you make your, your, your crops available for the, for the ram to eat. And honestly speaking, most of these ranch uh, uh, cattle, I mean, fat, healthy, and whatever. So there shouldn't be any need for rancor or for fighting. What, speaking, speaking, on, speaking on that uh, issue of uh, the, the agriculture. OK. Now, I, rea I realize that in Africa, the African people believe, you know, we are just kind of one-way traffic. And we believe, you know, uh, we, 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 we focus on one thing. Let me just take, for example, Nigeria as a, uh, being the largest uh, um, population in Africa. Now, we believe oil is the only source to survive in Africa, in Nigeria. Everybody rushed into, into the oil business. Everybody rushed into that. Meanwhile, there, in every state in Nigeria, there are at least one to two, one, two or three mineral resources in that place that we have not even, even tapped into. There are other things that we can, we can do because now people are getting, as, as you said, you know, time is coming we, we're coming to a, a, a level whereby oil will not be needed anymore mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we have electric cars coming up right now right now 
we obviously uh, gas, you know, less gas, uh, you know, uh, 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 gas, a uh, car coming up right now. So most right now uh, uh, in America right now, they, 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 we, we're using um, zero, zero gas. I mean, zero uh, 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 gas car. They're using electric cars here, like Tesla, or all of the, all, 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 all those ones. Now, very soon, all those cars, there will be less usage of petrol or gas, you know, like, as you say, you know. Now, same thing with other resources that we have. How many times have we tapped into the resources that they, that they have in Nigeria? Thank you very I, much. I, I remember, you know, when I was young, um, my father, you know, always uh, took me to, to the farm. You know, we, we, we've been a pastor and, uh, you know, as long as there is food, the part of the poverty is solved. It's already, <laughs> that's right. No matter what, if, if food is, is taken care of, the rest of poverty issue will be something different. That's right. You know that you will not die. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember back in that time, you know, and uh, you know, in our, he, he had different kind of farm, uh, farm around that he grow crops. You know, he would take me to farm. You know, all this. You know, you have to, you know, hoe it. You have to, you have to do it manually. You make yeah. ridges and everything, and still go into that and weed the place out as well. It it, it was so difficult, but I said very I, frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Very frustrating. Very frustrating. That was how I grew up. <laughs> that was how I grew up because it has to do. We have to do it with ourselves. We have to. You have to sweat it out, and a time to plant it, a time to to weed it out, and at the same time, when it's time for harvesting, too, we will still, we'll still go there and, and, and still be harvesting all those that kind of stuff. Now, in, in there is not now time right now that people can just you know. You, you can mechanize farming now is exactly. available right now. Exactly. If every, what will you say to people to, uh, uh, to, to, that will motivate them to start developing the skills, the you know, uh, 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 ability to, to, to farm? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Small scale. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. You see, uh, the beauty of uh, agriculture is in commercial farming. It is only commercial farming that you will see the youths, the youths having interest. It's only on the platform of commercial farming that we can bring youth on board into agriculture. Mm. There is no youth that is interested in rudimental farming. In fact, when I was very young, when I have to follow my grandfather to to the farm every Saturday. What I did those period was that once it is Friday, I will pretend I'm sick. <laughs> so when, you, when, they wake me up, when they wake me up on Saturday, <laughs> I will be shaking. And uh, when I tried that about three, four, five times, I mean, my grandparents got the logic. They said, okay, once it's Friday, they remind me. That we are sure that tomorrow now you'll be sick. <laughs> so I have no opportunity to throw away that idea. So now, mechanized farming is, can be very interesting. And that is where we are going now. Because the GDP of any nation will be based on the volume of exportation that that nation is making. As it were, if we need our Naira, Eh, to resuscitate back. If you want the value of Naira to come to bounce back, I think I will encourage the whole Nigeria now. And if you just, even with a plot of land, start farming, contribute to the food system. Contribute to the, to the extent that we now got to a time of, of exportation, of, of exporting their product rather. Because right now, by the grace of God, uh, my company, we, we already signed a deal, a contract with uh, a company here in the United States who are ready to come to Nigeria to manufacture tractors. And uh, 
uh, samples of those products we will really make payment we are shipping to nigeria so that uh, we can start uh, marketing on their behalf already and uh, this is a, a tractor that uh, is so it's so simple because of the kind of technology with which they made it even 18 years old, old uh, child students can can ride it women can ride it so we need to go on commercial farming for maximum productivity so that this will enhance our GDP. If we just continue in the rudimentary system and we continue to lay emphasis on the oil, that oil is, oil, oil is no longer relevant now. You know, this, during this period of uh, um, COVID-19, I mean, you see how, you, how drastically the oil price drop in the international uh, community. Mm. It has to, I mean, to, it has to let you know that we just need to diversify our economy. And agriculture is one of the mainstream where we can get the best to offer international community so that our dollar, our GDP can be fortified. Until we are able to do that, I mean, we are just, uh, we are just playing. So I, I, I will encourage that uh, our government supports agriculture support agriculture as in a commercial commercial farming now we've been trying to bring on board the industry that i told you about for some time now we'll be having issues challenge to see this to do this to do uh, to get certification to do the we thank god we got everything at last but these are some of the things that affects to be made more easy Nigeria has no uh, tractor manufacturing company. The whole Nigeria, with Nigeria as a stand now, we have one million tractor free deposits. I mean, deficit. So we don't have a tractor uh, manufacturing industry, but here is an assembly. I mean, a company that is coming with an assembly plant, and this will bring job to to our people. This, I mean, uh, farmers will have access to immediate repair, maintenance, and every other thing. So I think uh, in our side, we are trying to contribute to uh, agriculture in the area of mechanization by trying to establish a tractor plant. And we have gone very far. So like I told you, even for this uh, COVID-19, whatever, the sample of this is supposed to be on ground now in Nigeria, but it will soon be there now because the coast is getting clearer, especially when it comes to uh, export and uh, imports. So, that is going to be once that is done. We, uh, I believe that um, uh, commercial farming becomes easy when uh, people uh, are able to come uh, uh, as as a cooperative society, you know, farmer cooperative society, and we are able to make a kind of country because individual might not be able to afford a tractor, but uh, I mean, a tractor is going to be one of the cheapest tractor in the whole world, cheaper than any any brand. I, I know the most. I know the most current, the most popular uh, tractor in Nigeria now. But our own tractor is more cheaper, is more rugged, and is more durable, and is more easier to maintain. And the joy of it is that all the technology about this tractor, our company here in the United States, are ready to bring it down to Nigeria. There is no company in any world, any, anywhere in the world, that are ready to bring their, their technology like that. So once we have the technology in Nigeria. I mean, I think we are good to go, and uh, I believe that a lot of uh, a lot of um, youths will be coming on board because agriculture becomes so cheap, so easy, so enjoyable when there is mechanization. Now, while you are, while you are talking about that, I, I, you know there are some there is this problem that we have in our you know um, uh, in, in our land. And as a saying that says, what is yours is yours. That's right. Rag belongs, uh, rag is known to be thrown into the trash. Mm -hmm. So meanwhile, our own people love to eat or love to use what is imported mm -hmm. compared, to our, uh, compared to our own, our own stuff. So when you talk about African rice now, the, you know, because of the way it's being produced, you know, you don't enjoy it because of, you know, they said it is 
um, it's, it, there's too much stones in it, right? How do we develop ourselves from the, uh, because if you want to get people to patronize you, you have to do something in such a way that it will match up with what they are used to. Mm -hmm. I will not enjoy eating, you know, uh, uh, stressing myself to patronize Nigeria, Nigeria or African rice, where I know I can, uh, there's another rice that's just uh, easy to cook for me without, and I will not have, I will not stumble on, on the stone on it. You, are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. How do we get ourselves to a place? What's the plan to get yourself to a place whereby you, it will be of a first grade standard? I get you. You see, number one is orientation. You know, uh, an American will wake up today and say, God bless America. God bless America. Orientation. You see, until you celebrate yourself, appreciate yourself. There is no one that will celebrate you. Mm. Mm. When you wake up in the mirror every morning, you look at yourself and say, Lord, I thank you because I'm wonderfully and beautifully made. Thank you because my nation country, my country Nigeria is the best. Mm. Until we have a positive orientation about what is ours, we appreciate what God has given to us. It's not by accident that we are born in Nigeria. We have to appreciate anything that has to do with what God has given to us by birth. The right orientation is very, very important. When you wake up in the morning and you begin to look at your nose and say, Lord, I, 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 why do you make my nose so flat like this? Are you tired when you are manufacturing my nose? <laughs> why, why don't you make it a little bit pointed? <laughs> that is an insult on God. So those who doesn't appreciate what God has given to them, where they are coming from, their roots, their background, they are insulting God. I think we need orientation first. We need to believe in ourselves. Black people all over the world, we are like this. It seems we don't believe in this color. It seems we don't have confidence in it. Inferiority complex. Who told you? You that black is not the best. Like I've always tell my congregation, I said, if you ever see anybody that is lighter than I do, is too light. If you ever see any man that is taller than I do, is too tall. There is no country in the whole world that is better than Nigeria. So that's okay. Um, is there any product that they are producing anywhere in the whole world that could not be produced in Nigeria? Uh, go to every part of the world now you see the vibrancy of brain of nigeria contributing to the society in this america alone you see in the, you see in the medical field in agriculture in everything so as it were orientation comes forth then updates which is upgrade that you are talking about now now producers to also to produce things of standard and i think our standard organization are there also to ensure that they guide, they monitor, they support, they assist to ensure that we bring out the best. So as it were, the question of uh, substandard uh, productivity is not gonna be there because once we have a less corrupt uh, department that is monitoring, uh, uh, the, the packaging and uh, uh, the, the, uh, whatever, then uh, I think we, we are good to go. We want the best, and the best is what we are going to have. And made in Nigeria is going to be the best. We have a lot of products that is coming from Nigeria, and our rice is coming from Nigeria now. And made in Nigeria rice is, I mean, so beautiful, so sweet, so palatable. We have one of the biggest automated rice industry now in Nigeria, in Anambra. So, and the production is awesome. You know, Nigeria has stopped uh, importation of rice me for a while now. Yeah. What we are eating majorly in Nigeria now is made in Nigeria rice. But, but, and it's not everyone that is uh, having stone. In fact, there are rice that have stones 
And we also have machines that distone, that distone rice. So when you harvest from the farmer, rice that have stone and all, all I mean, you get the paddy, you, you take it to your rice mill after the milling, then you have to distone before you package. But what we have in the past was that people don't distone. The moment they finish in, uh, the, uh, the rice mill, woo -woo 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 to the answer, the package and this do it. But now, this is no longer, I mean, the stoning machine is coming into Nigeria almost every day now because of the, in fact, some people don't have farm. They are not growing uh, paddy, paddy, uh, paddy for rice. They are not growing paddy for rice. They are just buying paddy from farmers. Then they take it to their meal, rice meal, and then they distone. Some people are, don't even have anything to do with uh, rice meal. What they are doing is they are going into meal, rice meal. When they go to rice mill, the moment uh, the rice mill finishes, uh, whatever, whatever, they buy it raw from there and they distone it and package it. So we have the stoning machine now, the kind that was not available before. So our rice is the best, it's super now. So packaging is very, very important. Packaging is very, very important. And uh, we are, we are, I believe Nigeria is going to, made in Nigeria package is going to be the best now. Why you are still on that? Now, there are a lot of, uh, I'm bringing up this up because there are a lot of things that, uh, that are related to agriculture. You understand? You, we may mention of, you know, why, uh, why we, some of the Nigerians are having problems with one another is some, you know, uh, uh, ex-men allow their cattle to come to the, uh, to the farm yeah. to eat up their crops and, uh, and when you ask some of the some of the people why why do they allow their their, uh, uh, their their cattle to come to the to the farm, it says because they have you know uh, this is best food, which is totally absurd to me. And, you know, uh, uh, you know what can Nigeria do, you know, about this ranching? You, you know. See? Ranching, before you can start ranching at all, you have to talk about the food that the cattle will eat. That's where ranching starts. Yeah, so but every, every farm, every, every, um, every man or woman that is into uh, growing of cattle must have a plan to have a farm. Sir, can I, 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 can I there's something that they do here because that's another way of, that's another, another business in, 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 in farming too as well. There are, there are people that all what they do right now is to plant grass. Plant the They plant the feed for, for, for cattle. That's exactly. Cattle. That's they their plant food. fields. And that's what they sell. And they, they sell to it. people who have ranches. So when they bail it and put it uh, in the stock and they, put it, they sell it to the, to the, to the ranches, exactly. buy it. Not only the, not only the, for the cattle, for people that have uh, also ranch, for those that anybody exactly. that has ranch, they they exactly. sell it to them. So that's their own business. They exactly. they, they, they they plant feed, whereby they just that's their own their own business. Their own business, and, and that, that's just the only thing. So when we talk about, you, I'm only thinking of do you don't have to have a cattle before you can buy. I mean, before you can before you can plant feeds. Yes, before you can plant feeds, because you can own a farm for feeds for 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 cattle food, and so that people has cattle cattle we can be buying from you. That's another business that you have observed. People, you I mean, they package it, they bail it, and then they, they sell it. It's, it's 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 happening. So if you say you want to have you want to rear cattle, the first thing is what will that cattle eat? Now. If you want to be buying and giving, no problem. That is if it's available. If we have farmers like this in Nigeria that are doing that. But the situation we don't know, the first thing you must do is you must plant a farm where the feeds of these cattle will be coming from. So once you are able to do that, I mean, if you come closer to agricultural specialists, they will tell you the number of acres you need for so and so number of, uh, of cattle, and then you can, I mean, you are good to go. Once you are able to do that, you don't have any problem. You don't have any problem. So it's, it's as simple as that. 
So, sir. And then uh, another thing I, I, I observe is uh, storage facility. Yes. Nigeria has challenge of storage facility. Mm -hmm. uh, we're taking all our tomatoes from the north. We, I mean, if you don't sell in time, then it rotting away. It's not supposed to be so. There are equipment that can preserve. That's the secret of America. You eat all the farm products are always fresh. What's the secret? Storage. So a government must support. Storage business can be a business on its own. The farmers will just harvest and bring all their products to your storage and then be selling from your storage facility. They can sell over, over, over months, year. But the challenge of those, of those ones, when you, when you don't have a, a stable electricity, that's under problem. That's it. That's, it. that's the, 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 the challenge of electricity that you have to fuel the storage facility with um, diesel and whatever. That is the major thing. Because otherwise, we have a storage uh, company that are eager to come to Nigeria now. But the challenge they are having now is, where are we going to get uh, so much uh, money to, to, I mean, to, uh, to preserve? So if you have stable electricity as it were, a lot of things is going to go well. That means you can have your tomato harvest this year and they are still eating it the next year. So what will you say to people that I have that, you know, apart from, uh, do you uh, like uh, uh, other, other agricultural products like fishery, uh, having pond, um, uh, po po uh, poultry, um, you know, uh, other, what are the other, other part of agriculture that, that people will like to, you can say, people can also look into? Yeah, it's also very good. Uh, poultry is a very, very interesting thing. And uh, like I always tell people, if you want to go into poultry, make sure that you have a very good um, instructor, like a veterinary doctor that is going to guide you into uh, whatever you're going to do there. And it's not compulsory, you grow from beginning to the end, you know. Uh, poultry, when it comes to uh, uh, chickens and all the rest, now, everything is in segment now. You can decide to say a day old, you can do, do this, you can do that. You can just have an incubator and all you need is just to you break right. eggs and all the, So the, there are different kind of uh, category. You don't have to do everything from uh, one to the, to the last. So you need a guide and uh, whatever you want to do in the area of agriculture is always good for you to be trained on that line, for you to have enough knowledge about it so that when you venture into it, you don't regret it. It's, it can be very sweet, it can be very, very promising, it can be very, 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 very profiting, but at the same time, you need a guide. Mm. But like, you, like you, uh, the one you are trying to do right now to bring into Nigeria and to help Nigerians uh, how to uh, get a uh, uh, product, uh, just before I go into that, what does it take to have a land? My own understanding, somebody said, oh, you can rent land. You, can, you don't have to own a land. You, have, you, you can rent the land. You can, um, you can buy. But when you have all those things in place, what, at what uh, rate will you be able to um, uh, supply the contract, uh, the contractors, uh, I, mean, the, I mean, the tractors, sorry, the, the tractors to, to, to come uh, to, to that, to, uh, to, to the land to be, to be working in that land. Uh, talking about the cost of a tractor or something? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, well, as it were, uh, the cost of tractor uh, or any product whatsoever that has to do with uh, importation, is usually be based on exchange rates from time to time. Uh, the cheaper we have the exchange rates, the lower the cost. But as it were, like I've told you, I may not want to mention our cost on air now. No, no, not right, not, not right now, but I, I'm talking about how, how accessible they will be because if, if you want to plant, if, if you, want to have, you want to have a uh, agriculture, in a land, in, in a large, larger scale, so you want to be, you want to make sure you have, you know, it, 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 that that will help, you know, the, the tractors will help to be able to, you know, 
uh, because I know there are people that are watching right now. Yeah. I would like to get in touch with you probably later on, and they want to know how to, you know, maybe they are touch with the, the program and, uh, and uh, they want, they would like to do something about, uh, 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 about this kind of pro, about what, what is going on, you know, how to do the farming too, how to do, how to invest into all this kind of thing. So they might want to know what, how do I get in touch with you? When, do, when, when would the tractors be there? Maybe they have floor, they out of land right now and they want to be part okay, of Okay, like I told you, if not for the issue of uh, this COVID-19, most of our tractors will be in Nigeria by now. But hopefully by first week in, in August, most of our tractors will be in town. So anyone that wants to get in touch with me, uh, my phone number is available. I don't know if you want me to mention my phone number here. It's, it's available. Yeah, you, you can. Uh, yeah, where? Uh, 080233. Right now. 058. 080233053098. But for now, you can get me on WhatsApp because I'm in the United States, uh, at least uh, taking care of uh, some uh, vital thing with my uh, uh, partners uh, uh, in yeah. the industry yeah. here so in the US. We, we, we want to we make, make sure. Or, or, or because I believe there is somebody that will be encouraged and want to probably uh, get into farming and uh, you know and uh, want they want to see what they can do with themselves you know either in a large scale or in a lower scale and farming is very very interesting we, we can you can get yourself into either crop farming uh, pastor any, any kind of whatsoever right now we we have uh, an off taker in US here that is ready to, mm. to buy off Moringa, for instance. And um, we, for people who cannot even make themselves available, that is absentee farmers, we have lands that we can make available. And then we have already acquired land. We, it's not, uh, we, just, we just allocate to you, you get all your nursery documents, and then we watch over for you. At the period, I know four months, Moringa is ready. Then at the time when obstacles started taking, you take your, your own percentage, we take our own percentage, and that is it. Then we, there is an agreement we are going to, sub, we are going to give to you that you are, we, are going to, we are going to sign, and then uh, it's like that. So there are different farms uh, products that we can plant. We can go into cassava. We can go into so many things. There are many things we can go into. So, so while you are talking about that, that let me just take a, a little bit about that Moringa thing. Okay. What's Moringa? Moringa oleifera is what we call a miracle tree, and uh, it grows within four months to become a tree. And uh, the potential of Moringa is so enormous, both to combat climate change in uh, human health and so many things. It takes care of so many things. The leaves are very, I mean, it's so, it's, it's so potent. The, every part of Moringa is very potent. You know, because of time, I just want us to Google Moringa oleifera. We just go through it. And then you see the potential of, uh, like for instance, now we are working on a project and uh, we are trying to, uh, uh, that is uh, trying to plant 4 million Moringa trees in Nigeria to combat climate change. What's the secret? You know, um, every car emits carbon monoxide, which is an attack on global warming. That is an attack on global, on our environment, pollution. But four trees of Moringa, we combat, we swallow the, uh, the emission that comes from one car. So if you plant 4 million trees, it means 1 million cars. Moving on the Nigerian road, all the gases that is coming from them is already taken care of. So it's a project that is going on right now just to combat climate change. And also the leaf from this same uh, tree is what we are packaging into tea, into so many things. It helps, health, it, it, I mean, so many things. It's then the, the seed also, the oil that comes from the seed is, is for multi purpose use. In fact, we are, the, we are negotiating, uh, we are negotiating with uh, a company in Los Angeles right now on how to uh, bring a kind of a, um, uh, what do they call this? Uh, gas or whatever, with uh, from uh, from Moringa. Anyway, that is another uh, topic for another day. But what I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of things to do 
with moringa. It, the root itself, when you cut a leaf of uh, a root, the root of uh, uh, moringa, and you throw it inside water, doesn't matter how dirty that water is, it will be cleared. Really? So moringa, moringa is so powerful. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's so powerful. Every part of moringa tree is powerful, and it cures all manners of ailments. Cures, and it also helps to manage a lot of ailments, diabetes, and so, and so on and so forth. But has it been proven by, by the uh, CDC, uh, NDC, uh, NCDC? Uh, we have a lot of uh, certification on that already in Nigeria, but uh, we, we are still working on the certification that will help us to bring to the United States. That is going on. A lot of tests is going on now in different universities. I have some uh, uh, foreign investors from US that came to Nigeria. Uh, they have to be with the uh, University of Illinois and in partnership with University of Illinois, we enter into an agreement to make some results and to, to sign some documents. So a lot of things is going on right now so that uh, we can be able to make this a uh, reality. Wow, wow. It is, it's, my, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure meeting you, uh, agriculturist and also a pastor. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on this platform. I, I believe you, people out there have been blessed and uh, we, we just want to make you, you know, uh, 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 let you know that there, is, there are a lot of things that you can do with your time, even at this pandemic time. Right. To grow crops, you know, maybe you don't have that, 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 that courage to be a, a huge mechanized farm, a farmer. Right. You can start by you know, making a little, little, little pole, you know, even at your backyard. Even a garden at your backyard. Yeah. That, that little, you can little plant garden. tomato, you can plant vegetables at your backyard. Yeah, because in my backyard right now, I have, I have a little, little, little place like that. that I, Brilliant. I have, you know, I have tomatoes in there. I have okra in there, you know. And you can, you, you, you can see all those things coming like that. So the only thing you can do, you can start something small, start some, something exactly. small. Exactly. So when least. you start like that, you will soon see that after, that, after the first uh, you trial, build interest. That's right. You will begin to build interest, interest, and before you know it, you, you, you will soon see yourself you know, in a large scale family. Thank and you. Not just only, you don't have to be a crop farmer. To, to, uh, to be a farmer. You can mm -hmm. also invest into other, other part of, you know, farming system. Take the time to talk to, to the specialist in, agric uh, in uh, uh, agriculture and let them guide you and see what you can do to contribute to society. Remember, right. whatever you are doing, always give room for you to be updated. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't update yourself, you will soon see that you will, you will soon close out. Because people will always come at the back and they see what oh, you did right yeah. and they improve on it. And they, the moment they improve on it, your own product will, will be dropped. The next thing, because people want to see better stuff. If you are a farmer of rice, begin to see how your rice can be, be the best in the, the old world. Best, that's right. If you are, if you are a, 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 a ranch farmer, see how you can produce a, 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 your, your cow, your, your, your animal, can be the best thing that people will be rushing to. That's right. Whatever you want to do, do it with all your zeal, with, with all your mind. Do it with every idea that you have in your head and make more research. And always, always give yourself updates. Update yourself, update yourself every time. Otherwise, you will soon be at the back door. People want to embrace what you have, but you must put it on a, on a, on a platter that, that is good, that is acceptable for everybody. I can tell you, you can still start farming. That's right. You can still do something. Look into the state that you are in right there, right there, right there, right there, and see what you can still do to help the society, to help yourself, and to help the nation. Because out of what you are doing right now, it is what God, God, God is going to bless you with. Thank you. It is my pleasure once again to say thank you, sir, to, to you. you know, 
I mean, for coming. I mean, thank you so time. much. Mm, you know, uh, so in a, you know, in a few words, well, you know, I want you to give you a closing word to our, to, to the audience. Yes, audience, I want to appreciate you for listening to us today. Uh, in the area of farming, uh, there are three sectors. Number one, if you are not a grower, you are a processor. If you are not a processor, you are a marketer. So if you are not growing, you can decide to take off, be an off taker and begin to process whatever farmers are, are doing. And then at the end of the day, if you are not doing that, you can also be marketing whatever a processor has already processed. In any way, just at least start doing something about uh, farm products. And I see God increasing, increasing you greatly in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray concerning all the youths that are listening to us today, don't lose your focus, don't lose your goal, keep at it. David said something, he said, one thing I've had desire of the Lord, that will I seek, uh, that will I seek after. Please ensure that uh, uh, you keep, keep your focus and then God Almighty will continue to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. God is waiting for a church. He's coming for a church that is without spots and without wrinkle. That is uh, the topic for the update here now that God gave to me, the revelation that God gave to me. Jesus is coming for a church that is without spots and without wrinkle. Without spot means without any form of sin or righteousness. Then without wrinkle, that is what we are doing here now. That is without any form of being, without looking old. Wrinkle simply means without growing old. Jesus is coming for a vibrant church, updated church. Church that is still vibrant, that is updated, that is current. So they will, be, they will remain current in the service of God, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, sir. And I also want to encourage all, all, all everybody that is watching, the current. That's right. Updated. That's right. No wrinkle. Always stay fresh. That's right. God bless you. Until Thank we meet again next time Thank on you. this platform, the update. I believe you will remain focused, remain stand, uh, uh, standing with the Lord and vibrant always. No wrinkle. And God bless you. Amen. This is update. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank uh, you so much, sir. Uh, I appreciate you. Him for coming. And uh, we are blessed with your word. And uh, I, I hope uh, um, the Lord will continue to uh, uh, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Amen. Lord, whatever you are doing with the, with the agriculture, the Lord will bless us as well. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name.